If you've watched or read a lot within the A Song of Ice and Fire universe, you've probably come across this title a couple of times. King of the Andals and the First Men, Lord of the Seven Kingdoms and Protector of the Realm. But you might also have heard of the Stepstones and thought, oh, those islands seem pretty natural to me, but they're very much not. And now you're probably wondering, well, what exactly does that mean? How were the Stepstones created then? And what about the origin of those titles I mentioned? Well, you're in luck because I just found this thing, the Flute of Time. And with it, I will travel back in time within the known world. And I'm not just talking House of the Dragon or Fire and Blood back in time. No, I'm talking way before Aegon the Conqueror and the Age of Valyria. Let's start with the prehistory. More than 12,000 years before Aegon's conquest, before the first historic date was ever set. <laughs> Before the coming of men, what is now Westeros was inhabited by a mysterious race known as the Children of the Forest. They worshipped the old gods and carved faces into the weirwood trees to watch over the woods. These children were a magical species that grew at their tallest only to be at the height of children, hence the name. They were, as far as we know, the first to inhabit Westeros along with the giants. No one knows what happened before this time in history, and besides the existence of these beings, not much else is clearly known. Now if we leave Westeros for a moment, there are different ethnic groups on the continent of Essos. Legends say that in the Far East, the city of Ashai and the Great Empire of the Dawn existed in this time. There were also the Fisher Queens along the Silver Sea and their descendants the Tall Men of Sarnor. There were also the Cathy people who erected city-states in what would later become the Red Wastes. As well as the people on the Summer Isles who believed that their islands were all there was of the world, surrounded by an endless ocean. Notice this far back in time, Westeros was completely devoid of humans. The only place you'd find humans in the known world was Essos. Westeros had no native humans. But this is all that's known before the first recorded time in history of around 12,000 BC. BC being an abbreviation for before conquest. But I'm getting curious now. This version of the known world is way different than the one we know. So I'd be interested to see how things developed from here. What actually happened to the Arm of Dorne? And how did the Targaryens come to rule the Seven Kingdoms? So let's use the Flute of Time to travel forward a bit and to see what happened to make Westeros what it is today. At the first recorded time in history, around 12,000 BC, a human ethnic group from Essos known as the First Men invaded Westeros by crossing the Arm of Dorne. They used weapons of bronze and pushed deep into Westeros, and despite the Children of the Forest's supposed magic capabilities, they didn't stand a chance against the First Men's superior technology. So in a desperate attempt to halt the invasion of the First Men, the Children of the Forest perform a great ritual of hundreds working together to summon the Hammer of the Waters to shatter the Arm of Thorn, which led to the formation of the Broken Arm and the Stepstones. But even this couldn't stop the momentum of the First Men, who were stronger, taller, more numerous, and technologically superior. They ended up pushing far up into Westeros and established hundreds of smaller kingdoms. But here we come to a standstill within historic time period. This warfare and tension between the First Men and the Children continue on for centuries. So unless we want to sit here and stare at endless conflict for another 2000 years, we'll have to employ our precious flute once more. Approximately 10,000 BC, we come to the end of the Dawn Age and the signing of the Pact. You see, after years and years of warfare, the Children and the First Men finally come to an agreement of peaceful coexistence. This pact grants the First Men right to the open lands and lets the Children keep control of the forests. Over time, the First Men also end up adopting the worship of the Old Gods and the Weirwood Trees, and they end up actually kind of assimilating to the children's culture. It was also around this time, after the signing of the Pact circa 10,000 BC, that we enter the Age of Heroes, an era of history in Westeros which lasts around 4,000 years and is named after the great people in history who lived in the years following the Pact. Most of the lineages of the great houses can be tracked back to this time, with the first grand historical figures showing up in this era. People like Bran the Builder, founder of House Stark, Lan the Clever, founder of House Lannister, and Garth the Gardener, founder of what? Yes, House Gardener. But it's also in this age that we have probably the most relevant and interesting piece of history in the world of ice and fire, the Long Night, which happens around 8000 to 6000 BC. A cold and dark winter descends upon Westeros. The night lasts for decades and the others invade Westeros from the lands of always winter. They raise the dead to be their servants. In fact, 
The long night nearly destroys all the people of Westeros, and it would have if it wasn't for the last hero of the First Men. The legend says that the last hero and his companions went out to search for the children of the forest during the long night. And after years of searching, he was the sole survivor after attacks from whites, giants, and the others. But eventually he alone managed to reach the children and gain their assistance in the fight against the others. The Night's Watch was then formed, and with the children of the forest and the first men working together, they pushed the others back into the lands of always winter after they won the Battle for the Dawn. Other cultures of Essos further east also talk of a hero who fought against the darkness of that time, figures like Asor Ahai, though how much of that is real, or if they're really the same person, is unknown. And some believe that this hero will come again when another long night returns. After defeating the others, Bran the Builder begins construction of the Great Wall, with the help of the First Men, the Giants, and the Children of the Forest. The Wall was built to shield Westeros from the unknown dangers of the North, and the Night's Watch was stationed there to guard it. Now before we travel to the next era, we have a short detour to make, which happens only a few centuries after the Long Night, so bear with me here. Some time after this, the 13th Lord Commander of the Night's Watch breaks his oath. He falls in love with an other woman from beyond the Wall. He declares himself the Night's King and the other woman his Queen and starts a horrible reign in the North. So bad that even millennia later, stories are told of the horrible atrocities committed during his reign. But eventually the Starks and the King Beyond the Wall Joramun team up to defeat the Night's King and restore the Watch to what it once was. Now if you've only watched the TV show, the Night's King really isn't to be confused with the Night King from the show. There really is no such king in the books. The Night's King is just an entirely different person. But now before we journey to the coming of the Andals, we have to talk about religion one that begins in the hills of Andalos in Essos. A lot of you will probably know this religion. This is the origin of the Faith of the Seven, a religion where supposedly seven gods showed themselves to Hugor of the Hill, which then inspired the Andals to invade Westeros. The coming of the Andals actually takes place between 6,000 to 2,000 years ago, which is really a wide margin, and it makes it kind of awkward to travel to a specific time. But fortunately for us, the flute is... Yeah. The Andals cross the narrow sea, bearing the banner of the Faith of the Seven and bearing weapons of steel. And we basically see a repeat of what happened during the invasion of the First Men. Their technological superiority pushes back both the Children of the Forest and the First Men. The Andals war with the First Men and the Children for centuries, and most of the weirwoods are destroyed as the Andals gain the upper hand. In the end, only the North remains under control of the First Men. And even though it stays that way, the Children of the Forest gradually retreat deeper into the forest and north of the Wall. With the Andal invasion of Westeros, suddenly things start to look a lot more similar to what they do in modern times. The Weirwoods are mostly destroyed, as they are to this day, and the Children of the Forest retreat far beyond the Wall and outside of human contact where they stay to this day. We also see the defeat of the Weirwood religion in the Old Gods, which the First Men had assimilated from the Children of the Forest, in favor of the Andals' Faith of the Seven, which is also the dominant religion in Westeros in modern times. The fact that the First Men kept control of the North also explains the more separated Northern culture and the prevalence of weirwood trees and magic. But if you guys enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell icon, and join my Discord and come talk to me in the link in the description. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I will see you.